come, they, they can turn back into uh, an illegal status, the solitary temporary condition. And another point is that these, these immigrants, and this has been, has been observed in Italy especially, they may remain trapped within unregistered jobs, even after uh, legalization has occurred. And this is because, again, these are the temporary concepts, because they uh, obtain an unregistered job since the thing, and they might be trapped within this particular uh, labor Another point is that, uh, a more general point is that this kind of policies fail, in a sense, in eliminating what can be considered the pool factors for undocumented people. So anytime a legalization program has been developed in Italy, it has been observed that a growing segment of uh, illegal influence, but the influence has grown. So the problem is not eliminated, but is uh, the kind of policies which do not take uh, actually uh, the pool factor, the demand factor for these uh, uh, illegal workers. So this is just a table on what happened in Italy since uh, uh, the 80s. Uh, Italy uh, established and developed many uh, legalization programs. Uh, those before uh, the 1980s, uh, the 1986 included involved more, more or less 20,000 people, and then since 1986, we can count six different uh, legalization extraordinary legalization programs, each one involving more than 100,000 immigrants who are legalized. So if we sum up all of these uh, people, we can count more or less 2 uh, million uh, individuals who are legalized. So who spent actually an illegal, uh, an undocumented period of time for obtaining the residence permit. And uh, so a, a very large uh, number of immigrants. In this system. So this is also can be considered as a system of incorporation because this is typically also for other Mediterranean countries of uh, admitting immigrants as undocumented immigrants and then legalize them afterwards. So uh, how uh, our research aim has contributed to these uh, uh, aspects? Of, uh, First, we aim at describing the process of permit achievement followed by non-European uh, international immigrants. And secondly, we uh, would like to investigate the relationship between different patterns of uh, legalization and occupational outcomes that uh, occur also some years after, so in the long run. So the data that we exploited uh, are summary data conducted by East Turkey, which is the Italian National Institute of Statistics, in 2011 and 2012. This is a survey conducted only uh, on the immigrant population in Italy. And uh, importantly, it is the, the sample is referred to uh, formerly resident immigrants. But anyhow, this survey collects extensive retrospective information, so covering also what happened before uh, when they arrived. Which most of the time can be also a non documented entrance. Our subsample regards uh, first third generation immigrants who, had, who accessed Italy between 1980 and 2012, so the sort of refugee crisis is not considered in our study. And uh, uh, immigrants between 80 and 60 years old. Importantly, we are not considering uh, European nationals, uh, EU nationals. <coughs> Currently, so only people who uh, need a, a, a formal uh, permit at the end. So here we can see with these descriptive results that we identified three main channels of permit achievement. Uh, generally, so first of all, we can see amnesty, which is referred to uh, legalization programs, which involve the larger majority of the sample, both from all the sample and we consider all the embodied immigrants. So more or less half of, of them received the numbers. So enter illegally and then was legalized after the Then another channel is kind of identification that we consider, which also involved a very large proportion, especially of women, especially of uh, those who are out of the market. And then we can consider also a, a receiver category 
uh, which include both the bit of lucid or other kind of theories which are very uh, uh, involved, very fumory. These three channels are also associated to different uh, illegal duration of the immigrants. So the period of time that the, this uh, immigrant experience as an undocumented immigrant differ according to these different uh, um, uh, permit achievement uh, channels. So finally, 70 percent of those who obtain, uh, of those who are undocumented, <coughs> actually obtain the permit soon after the end, so uh, since the beginning, mm -hmm. so between zero and one years after arrival. And this is not the case for uh, those who receive an amnesty, only 40% of them receive the first term at the very beginning, but a large proportion of them also two or more years after. And so we identified uh, two different variables that account for these patterns of legalization. So on the one hand, we consider and let's say a reference category, which is those who always enjoy a legal condition of the recent arrival. So are people, are immigrants who did not enjoy, enjoy the legalization program, which by definition tied to the legal spell after the entrance, showing a legal duration of zero one year, so obtaining the permit soon after the entrance, and with no subsequent legal spells. Then we consider, on the one hand, uh, undocumented immigrants, so those who experience illegal entrance, distinguishing between those Sanati who receive an amnesty and those who did not receive an amnesty, but in any case, spent a legal duration. And then on the other hand, another rival uh, considered the same uh, on this uh, category, but then distinguishes according to the duration of the immigrants. Then, here is our empirical strategy. So that then we develop a model for uh, studying uh, occupational outcomes. Of course, our variable of interest is this part of utilization, which is uh, these two different variables. And uh, we consider as dependent variables two, uh, two different occupational outcomes. On the one hand, the employment status, which can be distinguished between uh, employed and employed and active, and then the occupational conflict. That on the one hand is considered to the ESA index, which is a, a continuous indicator. On the other hand, we use the Eastern classification of profession using a dichotomous variable, which equals one for high professions, let's say, so manager, professional technicians, and those clerks, and zero for all the other manual uh, occupations. Then we also include a vector of migratory data characteristics, like BSS migration, origin, region of arrival, and type of post permit, and then also individual aspects. Uh, importantly, these outcomes are referred to the current condition, whereas our indication indicator of patterns of utilization is something that happened at the beginning of the uh, migratory history when they arrived in Italy. And so here are reasons of first outcome, which is referred to um, the, the, the employment status. And this is a model, a, a multinomial consideration model. And the reference outcome is uh, being employed. So all the other probabilities are referred to this uh, base outcome. And we can see that generally, immigrants who experience the undocumented entrance, generally that they tend to participate in the labor market to a larger extent. Because uh, these are uh, risk ratios, so that they are less likely in active than with respect to uh, those who are always in the sense, including all the other uh, variables. That, to some extent, they are also less unemployed, so they tend to participate in the labor market to adjust. On the other hand, and this is an outcome referred to educational qualification, they generally obtain um, lower quality occupations. Because again, this is, this for instance, is a model, the logistic progression model on the, on the probability of having a, a high professional qualification. And you can see that both undocumented immigrants, both the groups of undocumented immigrants experience uh, a lower risk of accessing higher professions. 
And this is also the case for those who experience very long period after the end of as of the end of the year. And on, the, on the other hand, here is a uh, design indicator which again shows how undocumented immigrants experience a very long uh, period uh, as illegal immigrants and are penalized in a sense uh, with respect to this indicator of, uh, of the scale of the measures. So to conclude, uh, these are first of all the preliminary findings uh, because it is a research is still in progress. And in any case, we can say that according to our results, experience, experiencing uh, especially long segments of illegality matters. And uh, so, and they face the risk of being confined with lower quality patients, but in any case, low unemployment and inactivity risks. On the other hand, we can say that having benefited from an amnesty does not imply much additional penalties because there is not much differences between undocumented immigrants who enjoy an amnesty and those who experience, who experience the illegal duration but without uh, obtaining the permit to a uh, immigration program. So there is not much differences uh, between these two categories. So the point is, what, what makes the difference is having experienced Joint work with uh, Martin Vink and uh, Tiana Prochit uh, Tiana Prochit Brewer. Uh, basically, uh, what we are going to, uh, what we talk about in this paper is, and uh, what we try to to analyze is how naturalization or acquisition of citizenship of the host country influences the labor market outcomes of uh, of the migrants. And with the labor market outcomes, we mean the probability of being employed and also the quality of the jobs. Basically, we have the same dependent variables <laughs> with the previous. Now, now I saw that we have the same dependent variables with the, with the previous uh, speaker. So, uh, why why is citizenship relevant? Citizenship or getting uh, citizenship of the host country is relevant because. Uh, the research shows that it has a positive influence or it could have a positive influence on the integration of migrants and particularly on the economic integration but also on social integration. There are many studies showing uh, both positive uh, uh, effects. And uh, what we do in this uh, in this uh, paper is to investigate this first research question. So, which is the relationship between uh, having or getting uh, citizenship and the labor market outcomes? Okay, I, I would say that basically we will talk or we found we are on relations, uh, relationships and not on causality. So we don't claim with this study that getting a citizenship you know, brings better uh, labor market outcomes. And this is related more with the availability of that data. We use basically cross-section data. Why we use cross-section data? Because we also are interested to see how citizenship premium, which is the positive effect of citizenship, 
how this uh, uh, citizenship uh, premium, uh, let's say, uh, is, if, if this is, or whether this citizenship premium is relevant for 30 Western European countries. So we don't focus simply on a single case studies or few case studies like uh, the current research is doing. Of course, they do it for obvious reasons. They have very nice data, panel data, when they observe individuals through time, right? And uh, moreover, uh, what we bring you to the literature is the investigation of the citizenship policy and its effect on the uh, how this citizenship policy conditions the effect of getting or not citizenship. To put it simply, how uh, easiness of access to citizenship you know, conditions the effect of citizenship itself. Okay? And, okay, I, I more or less explained with why this study is relevant. There are a few studies that look at uh, this uh, cross or comparative uh, cross country uh, cro uh, cross country analysis or so that apply this cross country analysis and the existing studies have very limited external validity why? because these studies that I said before are mainly case studies which of course are conditioned by the context or by the context of this, of this, of this country why we look let's say, more on the, on the comparative approach. So we use more comparative approach, so we are able to see if the citizenship premium is relevant for all this in average, for all these countries. And we also focus, as I said before, on the, on the, on the citizenship policy, which is quite new, quite new in, the, in the literature. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I, I talked about uh, what, what the current literature uh, does and as I said before, there are, there are few, uh, few studies, uh, there are few studies which look at this across, uh, across, across country uh, perspective or which have this uh, cross country perspective. But let's, let's focus a bit more on the, on the, on the mechanism. So why we think that citizenship uh, bring to better labor market outcomes for those who get citizenship. Well, the first, the first mechanism is related to what we call in economic signaling. Naturalization, in principle, signals to the employers that these individuals are better integrated, so their probability to get a job or to get a higher job basically increases. Uh, as a second relevant uh, mechanism uh, is the incentive that the naturalized people or those who expect to naturalize they have more incentives to invest in human capital okay and this human capital you know, uh, increase or boost their probability to, to find a better job uh, and also to, to, to be to be employed of course the other mechanism or the other effect of, the, uh, of uh, citizenship is uh, the elimination of the barriers to various uh, public sector jobs which are also uh, uh, high quality jobs think about for example at the jobs in the, in the public administration uh, and other typology of jobs which are restricted only to citizens okay? And of course, naturalization could have a positive effect or could lower also administrative costs for employers. Okay? So, why this cross country and comparative approach is relevant? It's relevant because at the European level, so uh, access to citizenship is very, or the policy, the citizenship policy is very heterogeneous. Okay? So, for example, just to give you uh, examples, looking for example at the residence requirements to access uh, citizenship, we see that it ranges from five years in France, Netherlands, uh, Sweden, and UK to ten years in uh, Austria, Italy, and even to twelve years in Switzerland. So you see that the uh, citizenship policy is quite heterogeneous across across uh, across countries, and also the 
citizenship policy could be a very powerful tool to, to uh, boost, let's say, uh, labor market integration. No? And which are basically the mechanisms through which this citizenship policy could affect, let's say, the, the effect of citizenship? Well, the first, the first mechanism is, is related, again, with signing. Uh, what we argue in the paper is that in countries where the citizenship is easy to access, this signaling effect is less, less relevant. Why? Because basically all uh, or the majority of, of the individuals are able to access citizenship, so this integration signal is less relevant. Okay? And the second mechanism which, call, which we call negative signaling is, uh, again, uh, if citizenship is easy, easy to access, those who don't naturalize, those who don't access citizenship, uh, are, are, are uh, let's say, uh, give a negative signaling to the employees. Okay? Both these effects, both these effects have a negative impact a negative impact on getting citizenship. So, we will see later in methodology, we measure it with an interaction between uh, having citizenship and the, um, the, the, the measure of policy, the, me the, the measure of citizenship policy, okay? For this study, we use the uh, labor force survey uh, data, which is a quite rich in, uh, in uh, individual characteristics, that it also measures measures or uh, indicates whether the uh, whether the immigrant it gets citizenship or not, or has the citizenship or not, and of course it has also what we need in terms of uh, employment status, in terms of uh, op occupational situations, and in terms of of, uh, of, the, of the of the job status of the of the individual. As I said, we restrict the sample just to foreign-born uh, individuals that are entitled to naturalize. Okay, so those who have, we, uh, those who comply with the rules, with with the residence rule. Okay, as I said before, in order to access citizenship, the the immigrant has to be a resident in a country for a given number of years. Okay, and we restrict, of course, the sample to those who are in the, at the working age because we look, as I said before, to these labor market outcomes. And we exclude the second generation migrants because for them or they, let's say, acquire citizenship, for example, uh, for family reasons. So for those individuals, this signaling or this commitment to get citizenship is, is less relevant. Okay. In total, we have a sample of around 30,000 immigrants. Uh, so this is a cross-sectional study, as I as I as I said before, and that's why it has that caveat that I, I I I mentioned before. So that's why we can't argue on uh, uh, on causality. Let's say. Okay, of course, uh, we have some uh, methodological problems. Uh, one of the methodological problems is uh, endogeneity. And uh, the main, uh, the main uh, endogeneity issue is that we have some unobserved individual characteristics which affect both the probability to get citizenship and also the, prob the probability to have employment. Huh? What does it mean in, in, uh, in statistical or in econometrical terms? It means that basically we can't identify a clear relationship between the two because the standard errors are correlated. So the effect that one finds if there is endogeneity maybe is confounded by these unobserved factors that we basically don't observe, okay? 
is the, the classical so-called omitted variable bias. A second endogeneity issue we have is reverse causality. What does it mean? It means that citizenship, what we argue is that citizenship could affect the labor market outcomes of the individuals, of the migrants in this case. But it could be also the reverse, that the labor market outcomes, or the, yeah, the labor market outcomes and specifically uh, uh, employment status, for example, can condition or can affect citizenship. No? How? For example, in Italy, in Italy, one, in order to get citizenship, has to show that in, in, the, in the three previous years, he, was, he or she was employed. Okay, this is the classical case of reverse causality. So, in this case, citizenship is also conditioned by the labor market outcome of the market. Okay? And we will try to address both these endogeneity issues by using this uh, econometrical uh, method, which I'm not going to explain in much detail because maybe you are not very interested in it. So we, let's just assume that we somehow address these these issues. Okay, so these endogeneity issues. Okay, these are these are the models that that we that we uh, that we estimate. As I said before, we with the previous study we have the same dependent variables: the probability of getting employed, uh, getting employed, and the occupational status by the way measured also by the ISA index and also the probability to have uh, citizenship what does this methodology imply? this estimates, this methodology estimates simultaneously two, the, two, uh, the two models so in order to identify the effect of citizenship on employed and get rid of these endogeneity issues we estimate the first model simultaneously with the second model, okay? And the first model simultaneously with the third model. As I said, I will not go through uh, many, uh, many uh, methodological details. Of course, we controlled in our models for uh, various individual uh, variables like age, education, marital status, use of residence, language proficiency, uh, etc. Also for the areas of origin of the, of the immigrants and also for the uh, reason to migrate. Okay, these are the first, the first results. If you look at the, at the red square, it shows the average treatment effect. What does it mean? It means it shows the effect that a treatment into citizenship so the fact that people get citizenship, how it affects the labor market outcome of the migrants. Okay? In the first and the second model, we look at the employment probability. Basically, it shows that people who, who are citizens or who get the citizenship of the country of origin have a probability of 19.5 higher to get to be employed, okay? In the first model, we look at male coming from developing countries, while in the second model, we look at the female coming from develop, uh, developing countries, okay? And we see that the effect is relevant for both female, positive and significant for both male and female. In the third and fourth column, we look at the developed countries, okay? So we look at the immigrants coming from developed countries. And uh, as previous literature shows, this effect is not significant, so it's not relevant. It means that citizenship or having citizenship of the host country is not relevant or does not have an effect on the employment outcomes of EU citizens, mainly, or those, those immigrants coming from developed countries. Okay? And following the discussion we had before on the, on the legal and uh, illegal uh, status of migrants, I would say that why we don't find 
this effect for the uh, for immigrants coming from developed countries because their motivations to get citizenship are quite different from those immigrants coming from developing countries. Okay, this typology of migrants are already free to move. Okay, so for sure they not uh, they don't get citizenship in order to uh, have. Uh, to, to let's say to have more probability to get employed or to access better jobs because they already have that price. Okay? So the incentive also to invest in human capital is, is, less, is less relevant. Okay? So this is this result is in line with what with what a research finds out. So the second uh, table of results show the same uh, the same uh, research question, but now looking at the occupational status. Okay. So now the dependent variable is the quality of jobs. Okay. Here the positive and significant effect of citizenship shows that getting citizenship of the host country has a positive effect on having a better job only for male immigrants coming from developing countries and not for female okay in the third uh, in the third model we do the same the same estimation but using another technique the uh, OLS uh, the linear uh, the linear technique so the LS method and <coughs> sorry the 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 result is robust also to to, to this method now, let's turn to the second research question. So, which is the conditioning effect of uh, citizenship policy on citizenship status? No, this is supposed to be captured by the interaction between having or getting citizenship and the MIPEX index. Okay. So, what is this MIPEX index? This MIPEX index is uh, an index which captures is uh, easiness to access citizenship. Okay, it's measured at the country level. Okay, uh, a higher MIPEX index corresponds to easier access to, to to citizenship in a given country. Okay, so what we expect in relation with what I what I what we assumed bef before is that these interactions should have a negative sign and significant sign, meaning that an easier, easier access to citizenship okay, has a negative uh, effect on the outcomes or conditions negatively the effect of citizenship status. Okay? Uh, we don't find robust uh, indication uh, of this for male in this case and uh, looking at the employment status but we found some evidence look at the second uh, model the 2a model we found some uh, evidence or some some positive uh, some positive effect for female for female immigrants now here we look at the same research question but looking at the occupational status okay now the conditioning effect should be on the quality of jobs okay here in line with what we assumed before with the mechanism we assumed before we find that this conditioning effect is negative and significant for male immigrants no? This is shown by in the first model by the negative and significant uh, coefficient. Okay, we don't find any evidence for female immigrants uh, in this respect. Now, let's turn to the endogeneity issue. Okay, what what we did here is uh, first of all we tried to uh, to use this this technique which basically uh, addresses this this uh, energy issue how we basically excluded 
from the sample those countries for which the risk of having reverse causality is higher. What does it mean? For some countries, as I said before, there is a higher risk of endogeneity. Why? Because these countries have very restricted rules on uh, labor market uh, outcomes. What does it mean? It means that, as I said before, as in Italy, for every citizenship, you have specific rules that you should be employed in the previous period in order to get it. Okay? So we exclude it from the sum of these countries in order, let's say, to attenuate, in this case, the risk that our results are driven okay, by, by this source of endogeneity. Okay? And as we see, uh, let's say, our results are partially robust to this empirical exercise. Okay? Uh, more or less, our results are, uh, are the same as in the previous case where we included all the countries in the sample, okay? So, let's turn now to the conclusions. As the literature has found till now, we find that it, the citizenship theory exists also looking at this cross-country cross analysis, making this cross-country analysis, okay? But we found this uh, positive relationship for men and women, and for, when we look at the occupational status, only for men, okay? And of course, our results also confirm that this effect is only relevant for those immigrants coming from developing countries. The second uh, takeoff from this uh, study is that liberalizing the access to citizenship does not diminish the positive returns of citizenship for paid employment. Okay, so. Countries that apply easier rules to access citizenship you know, are not likely to have or to bring a negative impact on the probability of immigrants to have an employment or to get a higher employment status. Okay? And we find also some, we have confirmed, let's say, partially our mechanism, uh, the, the devaluation uh, mechanism, I explained before. So we found some indication for this, for this, uh, for this mechanism. And we also found very heterogeneous result across gender and uh, across labor market outcomes. Okay, and this study also calls for further research to investigate more in depth this this heterogeneity. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Who is uh, Alessandro uh, Bozzetti or, uh, yes. from uh, Bologna University to discuss about uh, this first papers. to the conference organizers and also to all the speakers who send me their long abstract or paper in time, giving me the opportunity to read it in advance. And I will try to do the same in the upcoming conferences where I will be a speaker as a sort of moral duty uh, after being on the discussion side. I think that talking about legislation and legalization related to the foreign population is today in the current situation very important. Uh, understanding how migration policies affect uh, immigrant labor market outcomes and consequently also their integration in the whole society is therefore fundamental. So, thank you very much for exploring this uh, topic. Uh, thanks to Rob for your presentation. 
it's true that there is a, a lack of empirical evidence about these issues, and analyzing secondary data in a regular label is very important. Mm. For secondary data, I make the specification for those who uh, perhaps are not usually involved in uh, research or data analysis. I mean data already available, and in this case related to the risk of survey, social condition, and integration of foreign system, on which to do specific data analysis. In uh, your long answer, you briefly discussed the legislative evolution, the Italian context, and the 2011-2012, the years in which uh, the Easter survey was conducted. I liked in the effects of the possible law of 2002, of the decreed flux fee of 2007 and 2008, uh, of the regularization process in 2009, limited to domestic care workers, uh, emblematic of the, the fact that we tend to regularize uh, what is uh, useful, obviously, to, to us. And if it's necessary to, regular, to regularize someone who cares for our uh, elderly and non self sufficient relatives, if uh, he has to be to miss in a field uh, all day with a minimum wage, it's okay, otherwise, it is uh, not acceptable. I once heard um, an interesting conference about it, uh, which called into question the novel by Pirandello, who no, is too to me, that one, no uh, one. Uh, as long as we need uh, the single migrant who takes care of a relative, or as long as we need the 100,000 migrants who work in the agriculture, immigration and regularization are accepted. In case their usefulness for us is equal to zero, immigration and regularization uh, must be full. Could you also refer to European macro processes, such as the entry of Romania and the uh, gathering of the European Union in 2007, and there are all aspects that are obvious consequences on the subject and uh, it do not dwell on us because we will have the opportunity to dwell on the role played by Europe also on uh, our representation. In your literature review, uh, I like positive and negative aspects related to the debate about regularization. Um, I mentioned sure above all, on one hand, regularization facilitated the mobility of uh, out of informal employment. On the other hand, regularization could generate additional irregularity if not combined with additional information. Uh, not taking persistent good factors and not providing solutions for the demand of for micro labor. Let me just point out also because I saw that you mentioned the ISMO Foundation in your uh, bibliography uh, that in the same year you refer to ISMO published a book entitled Integration Indexes. Uh, regardless of any possible argument in favor or against the use of the word integration or either, uh, inclusion, but uh, yeah, that will be a social cultural uh, debate thing. There is a chapter that focuses on the economic aspect of integration um, and therefore obviously on the working condition, highlighting the role played by the institutional construction processes of migrants, also evaluating how the legal status is related to the income and uh, to the economic situation of the migrants. It's just a suggestion in order to broaden the theoretical framework according to the focus that you could eventually want to do. And as already mentioned, you base your analysis on the survey conducted by the ISTA in 2012. And the last page should not be seen, that is a bit old, but it has been made available only at the end of 2016. Uh, and the use of your subsample, excluding naturalized EU citizens and also second generation migrants, allows you to focus on your research goal. Going to your preliminary findings, some relevant aspects are highlighted by the descriptive analysis. The differences in relation to the first permit achievement and the type of first permit unit uh, uh, based on gender, as well as the fact that the legal duration of the one year concerns about 60% of employee respondents. Uh, as well as, very important in my opinion, to emphasize the relevance of some result of the multivariate analysis, the fact that undocumented immigrants uh, on entry are more likely to assess irregular employment after the entries in Italy, or that undocumented immigrants on entry experience less chance of accessing higher position in the official ladder where expected outcomes. But also focusing on the probability of having a first non registered job, the relevance of the industry in Europe and the region, also of southern Italy, but also from those in the northeast is very interesting. I'm not going to comment in detail your data analysis, I'm only two questions about it. First of all, about your independent variable of interest, and data status on entry at three or four levels. Uh, cannot even be dependent on some of the parallel considered. Mm, I try to explain myself better. Having a certain legal status at the time of entry, it could depend on some of the variable you, you mentioned.